I was gonna say happy Sunday morning, everybody, but it's Monday. <laughs> hey, Wallace, we got creamer and sugar in there. Drink it like a man. If you can't drink coffee black, then you don't drink coffee. <laughs> so when I do those little imitations, that that's that means I hear y'all. Except I'm I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I got have creamer in my coffee, but I still like it. Okay. Well, we won that race last night. It was a big win for me personally because. Uh, I got a guy here in town named Rick Knoyer. And Rick, you watched the video last night uh, after the race. Rick, Rick Knoyer, they call him Knoyer the Destroyer. And I interviewed him about two weeks ago. Uh, th this filming crew is doing a documentary on him. Well, I guess he decided it was time to speak his truth. So my buddy Rick Knoyer told the filming crew um, I guess they asked him, and he said, Kenny Wallace is my nemesis. That's the guy I want to beat. And uh, it was heartfelt why he wants to beat me all the time. Now, this goes back 15 years, and I never knew it. But I always knew Rick. Rick always just, me and Rick were always racing each other. So come to find out, myself and Rick Kenoyer, we inspire each other. <laughs> so uh, we lined up side by side last night up there in Quincy, Illinois. Track was super slippery. And uh, although I never saw him, they say it was a hell of a race. And he told me after the race, he said he was, he was sparks were flying on the front straightaway wall. And uh, so anyway, for that reason, it, it was, a, it was a good personal win. And uh, I'm still going to these racetracks by myself. All right, uh, how about that NASCAR race? Wow, I was able to debrief, watch it all, and I'm gonna give you my takeaways. Um, first of all, you know me, I'm honest. Not in a mean way. People come up to me all the time. Wallace, you say it the way it is. I said, now hold on, but I'm not mean. I just talk about what I hear. Chase Briscoe, uh, out of Indiana. I got some friends over there in Brownstown, that dirt country. A um, handful of them say, Chase Briscoe never deserved to go NASCAR. Uh-oh. <laughs> I got to be honest with you, man. Whenever you win Darlington, that means you're a race car driver. You just don't you just don't hold the wheel and go around around uh, Darlington. If you win Darlington, that means you are somebody, and, and you're etched in history forever. It, it's one of the biggest wins in NASCAR that you can achieve. It really is. So, congratulations to Chase Briscoe. More so because years ago I heard that he. Ne I, here's exactly what I heard. Chase Briscoe never done anything around here. I'm like, well, then how the hell did he get where he got? Uh, and, and now he got there, and, you know, that, that's not one win. That's another win. You know, he won Phoenix, and he's, he's won enough that he's able to, you know, get, in, get a ride for next year because that team's closing down. By the way, I got brain, it's called brain fade. Mark Martin taught me that. Chase Briscoe is going to what team? I forgot. Respond right here. That bothers me that I forgot who he's going to for next year. Tell me who Chase Briscoe is driving for next year. But the, but the bottom line is, he's good enough to where they call him and they say, hey, when you're done driving that 14, come drive here. Oh, he, he's going to take over for Martin Truex, right? A pretty good ride that's a pretty good ride all right so i want to talk about that finish uh 
How many of you was thinking that, well, here comes Kyle Busch. He's just going to knock the hell out of him and win the race. Except Kyle really never could get close enough to him, except for the last corner, turn three, where he dive-bombed it. And how many, how many of y'all went, he's going to knock him out right there? But it was a dive bomb. Kyle Busch made an effort. And I do believe, <laughs> is it, isn't it a coincidence that the team that just got their ass handed to him by NASCAR, Richard Childers Racing, it was Richard Childers Racing. So I don't think Kyle Busch was going to go have to take a swipe. Because, here, let's put it this way. As a race car driver, Chase Briscoe was in your lane. And the wall's there. Where, where are you going to knock him to? He's already on the wall. So Kyle Busch, when he went in the corner, he wasn't going to knock him out of the way. Because Kyle was already on the wall. I mean, Chase. Chase was already on the wall. It's Darlington. Different circumstance. So most likely Kyle was going to hit him. And they were both just going to keep running into each other. Right? All right, I'm bad at repeating myself, but there, there was nowhere for Kyle Busch to knock him to. They was already both in the wall because you run the wall. <laughs> All right, I am thinking of Larry McReynolds right now. Beat that with a damn, beat that like a horse. So anyway, uh, I think I've uh, talked about those two things. Uh, Chase deserved that ride. Chase deserves to be a cup driver. Chase won one of the most prestigious races there are by driving the out of that race car. And um, Kyle could not knock him out of the way because there was no no place to knock him to. <laughs> um, so Pockrass or somebody, uh, respond right here, asks, I mean, I think it was an easy one. Uh, I didn't like it. Somebody asked Kyle Larson uh, an easy question and Kyle, Kyle held us cool. They said, Kyle Larson, you lost the regular season championship by one point. Do you think it's because you went to run the Indianapolis 500? Come on, man. It was by one point. Kyle answered it perfectly. No, it's probably some of those other wrecks we had this year. You know, Michigan, he, he spun out in front of the field and wrecked at Michigan. When you're dealing with one point, it could have been anything. So I think that was an asshole question. You know, of course, it was an aggressive question. But um, it, would have, it would have been better. I mean, here, hey, Kyle, do you think you lost the regular season championship because you spun out in front of the field at Michigan? No, that, that's too easy. That's not controversial enough. Let's go for, yeah. You, you went to try to win the biggest race in the world. Kyle, do you think you lost the regular season championship because you went to try to win the biggest race in the world, the Indianapolis 500? No, they wouldn't ask it that way. See, that's those gotcha questions. I got you. I'm going to get him. I'm going to piss him off. So, I mean, whatever, whatever. I didn't like that. Um, yeah, Um uh, how about Tyler Reddick? He wins the regular season championship. Uh, I liked it because we finally got Michael Jordan to talk. In, in length, just normally. They interviewed him pretty much during the race. Man, I'll tell you what, that was, that was good to listen to Michael Jordan. You know, see, I was born in 1963. I'm an old man. To me, Michael Jordan's like Muhammad Ali. I mean, I know Muhammad Ali is extremely famous, but I, I believe Michael Jordan is too. Michael Jordan's one of those rare athletes only come along every once in a while. He was the first dominator. He, he, Michael Jordan was the first athlete to just literally put one team on his back and, and win. And yes, he had some help, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, but still... I mean, you don't win all those NBA championships with the Chicago Bulls unless you got Michael Jordan, and he's such a badass. They say Michael Jordan's got a yacht so big, 
and he just, they say he won't let nobody uh, on it. He lives on it sometimes. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just, just something to say. Just something to say. A little tidbit of information. Uh, information. Get rid of the R instead of information. Information. <laughs> I eat, man. Uh, I think those are my highlights. But what a race. What a race. I mean, and, and how about Lee Diffie? Uh, they, say, they say that some rednecks roughed him up because he got a, he got a, uh, you know, he, he, what is he from, Australia? Well, have you ever listened to Larry Mack? <laughs> so if you're from the north, if you're from Oxford, Maine, or New Hampshire, or Boston, could you imagine somebody from Boston talking about the race? You'd probably be more pissed because we had that civil war. So I think Lee Diffie did a hell of a job. i tell you one thing I like about Lee Diffie. When it comes down to an exciting finish, he sounds like Kenny Wallace. Lee Diffie was screaming, but yet you could hear him. That's my takeaway about Lee Diffie. And hey, Lee has got two great races to call. I mean, you know, he, he came in at the right time. So the last two races, Lee, Lee Diffie did a hell, hell of a job. Uh, Daytona with Harrison Burton and his dad Jeff in there. Uh, he's already, Lee Diffie's already making some calls that people are starting to quote. You know, your little boy just won Jeff. Um, that was a quote, something like that. And so, all right, all in all, I, I still think, you know, listen, I'm going to call NASCAR out like I have for this and that. Last week, I said, uh, drivers need to do more. I said that along with Danielle Trotta. I said, drivers need to do more. Yes, I did. But then the next day I come out and I said, NASCAR is winning. And somebody said, oh, what? Did NASCAR jump your ass? It's kind of funny. You say, you say something like, NASCAR drivers need to do more. So I criticized. I criticized. I didn't condemn. I criticized NASCAR. And some people just love that. If you criticize and we love you, Herman. Then the next day I said, hey, why did NASCAR TV pay so much? Why, why is NASCAR viable again? By the way, the crowds are coming back. But all the, and they, they didn't like that. They didn't like me talking good about NASCAR. But those are the same ones that will be watching the race. So, I'm a, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm like the Fox Network. I'm fair and balanced. I'm fair and balanced. <laughs> I love Herman. He talked shit about NASCAR. I don't like Herman. He talked good about NASCAR. I'd say that's 50-50. As long as you got everybody 50 50, we're doing all right. All right, everybody, I think I covered it and uh, got a little headache. Not really. I think I just got up too early. How about them Cardinals? How about that? Took two out of three from the mighty New York Yankees. And by the way, uh, our local radio, KMOX, I didn't realize it. The Yankees haven't been that good lately. They're only playing 500 baseball since like June or July. They did a lot of winning early. But they're still the Yankees. 27 world championships. And the Cardinals, 11. I told everybody, I said the best two teams in baseball. Oh, they didn't like hearing that. I was going to say history, but I wasn't going to add that on, on at the end. In other words, the Yankees and the Cardinals, the two best teams in baseball history. But on purpose, I didn't add the word history on. I just said the two best teams in baseball, which is true, too. All right. It's Monday. And uh, we're going to mosey on down to Charlotte. Spend some time with my mama. I think I might paint that trike. It's a silver. I saw a blue on a, on a Tacoma. Toyota Tacoma. I saw this beautiful blue. But uh, it might be a little expensive to paint paint that track. Man, I got a hell of a deal on I got a hell of a deal on that track. 
700 miles on it. Bought that son of a bitch for like good deal. All right. Until until the next uh, coffee with Kenny. Louie, are you turning your back on me?